Hey y'all, good morning. <clears throat> so I spent some time thinking about it, uh, trying to explain everything that's going on to a kid. So I'm gonna try it. Let me know what you think. So here's what's happened. There's a family of coronaviruses that live down the street. And what's a virus? It's a bad thing wrapped in this stuff called protein that's trying to get inside your body. Uh, this one's a coronavirus and we've never seen it before. He's really sneaky. He'll do whatever it takes to get into your neighborhood and to get into you. So what he'll do is, as you're out, you're playing with your friends, you're throwing a ball, you're laughing, you're talking, you're in your friend's face, you're coughing in your hands, you're shaking your hands. It sees the opportunity and it gets inside your body. Once it goes and gets inside your body, it tries to get into your lungs. And it, it happens when you spit and you're close enough to actually, actually spit in each other's face because it travels on the spit six feet away like two arms, it depends on how small you are, two or three arms uh, length away from each other. It travels for six feet and it lands, cloop, gets into your mouth. So once it gets into your mouth, it makes its way down, or your nose, it makes its way down into your lungs. And as your lungs breathe, the, the tissues and cells there are called respiratory cells. It specifically targets the respiratory cells, especially like for your mom or dad if, if they smoke. When it gets in there and it goes through your mouth, it starts to make a tickle right there in your throat so you can <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, your body gets the message that there's a virus on board. We have a virus in our body. We have a virus in our body. So it sends out the troops and that's called your immune cells or your antibodies and it's a bunch of different things that, that come out to try to see what's going on and they're trying to see if they recognize it, but they don't. So they're, the antibodies are sitting there like, we don't know what to do. So everyone else starts attacking and attacking and attacking. In the meantime, it's deadly tickling your throat. Now, as they attack, things start to heat up. Whew. And that's when you might start to get hot, or we call it a fever. Uh, and things typically go normally the way they would, like average temperatures, 98.6. But as things to start heat up, heat, heat up, it reaches a, a temperature of 98.4. Your hands might get hot. That's a mama remedy from Mama Tammy, Dr. Singleton. Your bottom of your feet might get hot. And you start to think that, mm, is it allergies? Uh, is it a cold? You start to get the chills because it's a virus and that's what those, that, remember the, that coronavirus family, that's, that's what they do all the time. If you've ever had the flu or the cold or allergy, it starts to hide and pretend that it's, it's something else. So what happens is that you start to cough and every time you cough, it goes down. Because the virus is there, there's these things, these little hairs in your lungs that when you're fighting, they're called cilia and they help push things out. They're trying to push things out which makes you <clears throat> cough, but the coughing makes things worse. So one of the symptoms is dry cough. It lets them know, lets their body know that something's down there that shouldn't be. But the problem is every time you cough, the cough causes more damage to the tissue. Remember those cells I was talking about to push things out? So there are less of them. And as they're there, there's a fluid, it's called mucus or snot, uh, that starts to sit there and uh, you cough to spit it out and you do more damage. And what happens is if you don't stay on top of it, uh, the virus can get in and take over because it starts to replicate. Remember, it gets into your body. It's a bag of bad genes, bad stuff called genetic material. with bad pieces of itself to get into you. And it lives off of you like a parasite or, or like a tick. Uh, once it gets in there, it starts to make a pool. And it's like opening the, 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 the gate to the neighborhood pool. It starts to call all its friends, its new friends that it's made. And they start multiplying and swimming around in your, in your lungs. And then they start to make it difficult to breathe for you because it can cause this bad thing called pneumonia. There's fluid in the lungs. And when fluid gets in the lungs, all kind of bad things can get in there and swim. And when they get in there and swim, they're again, they're still multiplying. So they try to take over. And sadly, the virus can take over your body if the, num the, the pneumonia gets bad enough. What happens is you'll need to go to the emergency room if you ever have difficulty breathing. For any of you that have asthma, understand if you have, have asthma, you know what I'm talking about. It's a, you feel like you can't catch your breath. And that's when you have to go to the hospital to get help with oxygenation. They do whatever they can to help you breathe because the, the soldiers, your immune system and your immune system need oxygen to fight, to fight, to fight. So what will happen, sometimes you'll go to the hospital, they'll test your finger uh, for, for the oxygen in your blood by putting a little clip on your finger. And if, you're, if, you, if, that, if they're able to get you stable and they send you home, 
they tell you to take care of yourself. So your mom or dad will take care of They'll monitor your, your temperature. They'll check your breathing or respirations. They'll see how, if you're tired or fatigued and they'll check your heartbeat or your pulse. Sadly, some people, it might be too late. We don't know, we haven't figured out what to do with this virus yet. Uh, so some people will end up on what's called a ventilator, so they, a machine that actually breathes for them. The thing is, we can all help prevent this virus and fight this virus by doing something as simple as washing our hands for 20 seconds, right now staying at home, pretending that everyone else is sick or that you're sick and you don't wanna give it to them and trying to stay at home as much as possible. Listen to the adults, listen to the parents, breathe, check, check on your mom and dad, let them know if you're feeling hot, if you're having symptoms of being excessively tired or difficulty breathing, and then step back and take in everything that's going on and understand that we're trying to figure this thing out. Thanks.